Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. Thanks for joining us, whether you're watching on TV or listening in on the radio. And we're going to have a very interesting discussion today with the CEO of a company you've probably heard of, uh, Robert DiMuccio, Bob DiMuccio, a lot of people call him, the president, CEO, and chairman of Amica Mutual Insurance Company. Amica, a very familiar name. Bob, thanks very much for being here. Thank you, and I'm excited to be here to well, talk about our company we're and, glad and to, to meet you. you. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, while I do think most people watching and listening probably know a bit about Amica, if there's someone there who just knows the brand name but not exactly sure what you do, what's the what's the thumbnail sketch? What do you do at Amica? Okay, we're a national insurance company. We sell what's called personal lines insurance products, and those are the products that individuals and families generally buy to meet their needs: auto insurance, homeowner insurance life insurance, personal umbrella, personal watercraft, and some related products. So if, if you're an individual or family, we can probably meet just about all of your insurance needs. So a classic insurance company in a lot of ways, yeah. a traditional one yes. that people will think. Yeah. Um, you're up in Lincoln. You have a, a yep. pretty big campus up there. How big is Amica in terms of employees, policy holders? What's the size of your company? Okay. Uh, we're about a billion eight or so in, in revenue. Uh, in Rhode Island, we have 1,400 employees based in our campus in Lincoln. We have about another 2,100 employees in a branch system. We have 44 branches uh, near about every, we have a, an Amica branch near about every major metro area in the country from Portland, Maine, to Portland, Oregon, to LA, to Houston, Dallas, Chicago. If you're near a major metro area, we have an Amica branch. Has Amica always had that big of a footprint? Is that something in recent decades? How much has that developed? Well, we, we were charted in Rhode Island in 1908, and we sort of grew out from New England over 108 years, okay? And uh, so uh, we're a direct writer. In effect, if you buy insurance from us, you're buying insurance directly from one of our employees in our branch system. Not a broker or anything like nope, that? No, nope, we, we, we sell direct. And many of our customers, you know, when, when the company was chartered, I said 1908, it was 1907 actually. When our company was chartered, okay, uh, as a direct writer. When people migrated to other parts of the country, they carry their insurance with them. So if you migrated, think about all the migration areas, you know, the Southern California sure. to Texas to Seattle. Once air conditioning was invented, that's everyone exactly went south. exactly right, yeah. if you went to Florida. <laughs> so people carried our insurance and created pockets of customers and we created a branch system to service them. So now we're, we're coast to coast and uh, though we don't have a branch in Alaska, if you get a summer home in Alaska, we'll insure you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. So um, one thing people with long memories might remember you used to need a referral to get in a policy from Amica but I think that's over now right you you can just you can come and just buy one yep yep uh, you know uh, we we're a company and and sometimes I say this to folks and, and they sort of wonder up until 20 years ago 108 year old company until 20 years ago had no advertising budget whatsoever if you looked at our financial statements 20 years ago there was no, no, no magazine ads, no radio, no TV, no TV no, none of it. Sorry about that, no TV ads. Yeah, but we do a lot terrible. of TV ads oh my God, now. Yeah, yeah so we, we do a lot now. <laughs> so um, we, the majority of virtually all of our business came in through referrals. One satisfied customer referring another, whether it's a neighbor or a friend or a coworker, and that worked really well for a lot of years. But things have changed, and now what we do is we reach out into the community and we tell our story. And how do you tell your story? You do it through advertising. And we advertise in all the media, whether it's television, radio, uh, we're out on the internet, we use direct mail, and we're reaching out telling our story. So we want you to come in, call us, we'd be glad to talk to you about your insurance needs. It's April at this point, but uh, as we tape this, but memories are still uh, vivid of yeah. this winter that we've just had in New England and Rhode Island and Massachusetts and elsewhere. And I'm, I'm curious as an insurer, what was this pretty brutal winter in the Northeast like for Amica? What was the impact for all of you? Okay, yeah, uh, you know, you know, last year was actually a great year. It was kind of a quiet year for, related to catastrophes and storms and things. But uh, Mother Nature wanted to remind us that she's still there and still in charge. So we uh, had, a, had a great uh, 2014, but the first quarter of 2015, uh, we had a lot of claims and uh, a lot of what we call ice dam claims where in effect the gutters on your house freeze up uh, and water builds up behind those gutters as as they thaw out it backs up into the house right the ice dam claims we had from the beginning of February through about middle of March we had about 
10,000 ice dam claims concentrated in the Northeast, a lot of them in Rhode Island. And I, I'd like to, to, to maybe take a moment to sort of brag on our claims folks. You know, we have a, a standard, customer service is, is I think something that our folks uh, really take pride in. And we, we answer the phone, a human being answers the phone when you call our company in three rings. Well, layered on top of all the normal claims volume that we get nationally, you know, we're a national company, we got 10,000 extra claims concentrated in southern New England. And we kept that standard throughout that time period. So I want to take a moment uh, to, to brag on our folks who, you know, answered the phone and uh, handled all that extra volume and, and went out there and, and helped our policyholders. Now, as you say, you're a national company. You're, you're far from only concentrated in the Northeast these days. But was the winter uh, significant enough to have a, a material impact on your finances for 2015? Will you feel it when you when you total up the books at the end of the year? Or, you know, it was it was notable for us who live around here, but in the end, it's it's not a huge deal financially. No, it, 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 it's going to be a big uh, financial cost to us, um, but you know that's what we're built for. Uh, last year was unusually good. This year is going to be sort of moderated quite a bit by, by the cost of the claims. We're built for it financially. We're ready for it. And you know the way we look at sort of claims, if folks didn't have claims, they wouldn't buy insurance. So you know, and, and that's where uh, we, I think, our, our folks really shined. You know, um, in the end, okay, when you have a claim, you want to talk to a live human being and say, I'm going to help you through this, whether it's a, you know, a, an ice dam claim or something more serious, and Amika's got you covered. And uh, so, you know what, I think that's when our folks really sort of earn the reputation that uh, they've built through the years so when we have a claim. So a few years ago, a Washington Post columnist who was himself an Amica uh, policyholder wrote a glowing piece about you guys. And one of his quotes, uh, pretty pithy, was, quote, Amica is the anti-Wall Street financial services company. Now, I'm sure you have friends working down there, so you're a little <laughs> worried about that. But uh, what do you make of that comment? Do you agree with that, or do you, do you know where it's coming from? Well, I, first thing I want to say, there were a lot of nice people working on Wall Street, so <laughs> I'll get that. But, you know, I, I was actually sitting in an airport uh, when I got a call from my office and said, there's a reporter from the Washington Post who wants to talk to you. And I was, oh, okay, wow, Washington Post. So uh, I, ca I called him back, and uh, Mr. Perlstein, and I, I started speaking to him, and and he was writing this article about you know how companies are managed and run and, and I, I asked him how did we come to your attention he said well I'm an insured of yours for a very long time so we had this really pleasant conversation about you know Amica's culture and our values and how we do things and how we value individual customers and individual employees and it turned out to be just this great interview and um, about three days later on Sunday morning I got up early went on the internet and saw the Washington Post column that he'd written he's a business economics uh, reporter and it was great so oh, it's it a prize really winning uh, yeah, columnist yeah, as so well yeah it was, was really great and I became a regular reader of the Washington Post after <laughs> Actually, that. Actually <laughs> he had already you'd already been his customer etc. Um, you know, you talk a lot about being a mutual insurer at Amica. Um, before we go to Brickham, just can you, what's a basic definition for people who don't know their insurance lingo? What's a mutual, why is that different from a different kind of insurance company? Okay. Well, a mutual company, you know, the whole concept of insurance is sharing risk across a, a wide group of individuals or companies and so forth. And with a mutual company, if you buy a policy from us, you also effectively buy a share of ownership. So um, one of the, the, the neat things about being a mutual company is, boy, we have clarity in our objectives because our customers and our owners are actually the same group of people. So um, we, we think a mutual form of organization is right for us, particularly based on our philosophy of taking care of our customers and servicing them. And, and sending them a check at the end of the yes, year if you a have dividend a check. dividend. Yes, if you have a dividend policy, you get a check. So um, we, we think it works very well for us. And, uh, you know, we've, we've run in that form or managed the company in that form for over 100 years. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk much more with Amica CEO Bob Bonuccio. Don't go away. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and we are talking this week about the business of insurance. And we were talking a little about the winter weather and its impact on a famous name and around Amica Mutual Insurance Company. I'm joined by the chairman, president, and CEO of Amica, Robert DiMuccio. I keep, and I'll say it to the viewers, I keep going to say DiNuccio because I knew a DiNuccio, and I, 
So it's an M, Demuccio. Get it right. Never as, get someone's as name. As long as you keep saying Amica, I, I'm that's happy. That's true. That's very <laughs> smart. Your, uh, your board will be proud of yes, you on that yes. one. So, um, well, speaking of Amica, uh, last month, J.D. Power, I, get, I feel like I get these press releases every few hours from you folks, uh, and it's a compliment that J.D. Power has named you number one in something, again, some satisfaction, some customer rating, and I'm sure you're very proud of it. Um, most recently, I see a number one in customer satisfaction for home insurance for the fourth straight year. You beat out Nationwide, Travelers, Allstate, State Farm, a bunch of famous names in your industry. I know you're very proud of yeah. that. What do you think, though? I'm sure you know they'd like to be coming out number one. What are you actually doing differently and executing differently at Amica that's keeping you on top of these lists so frequently? Yeah. You know, I, I get that question a lot, and I wish there was sort of some secret source or, you know, we've got this super-duper computer program that, that allows us to, to service our customers better than everybody else. But really what it comes down to is our people. You know, um, in, in insurance uh, is a complicated product, okay, and and our, our folks, okay, earn that reputation one customer interaction at a time. And, and you know, y you would think, well, insurance, it's, it's sort of a financial <laughs> product and, and, and but you know we're, we're involved with folks in some of the biggest highs and the biggest lows in their lives you know somebody uh, buys their first house and they need the paperwork to go to the closing to, 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 to buy their house it's our agents or our reps that are helping them do that so those interactions where you're helping somebody you're, you're, you're working through the process with them okay they're excited and those interactions are where we, we win the awards you know when you're at a car dealership and you pick up your new car and you need just the insurance company to finish the paperwork so you can pick up the car well our folks are there and those interactions we're timely we're quick we follow up those are where you earn those awards and you know it, it, when there's a claim you know you might have somebody who's who's faced you know one of the most tragic incidents in their life and you know they, they want a human being on the other side to say you know we're going to help you through this you're covered by us and we're going to help you through it so that's where that reputation through literally we have uh, over 2,000 frontline people that are on the phones uh, and meeting our customers every day that reputation is earned one interaction at a time thousands of times a day and and I wish there was some sort of big secret but that's that's really all it is following up and doing what we promise I know you've been asked this before but I find the answer interesting if you had to describe Amika's culture in one word a uh, single word what word would you use respect respect okay I think uh, you know it encompasses a lot of things uh, respect particularly for our most important constituency which are customers our policyholders Respect for each other, for our employees. We have uh, well over 3,400 employees, and I think it's important that we all respect each other, okay? And then, you know, we have other constituencies, uh, regulators. We're regulated in enterprise. We respect our regulators. Uh, you might not always agree with them, but you respect them. Yeah, we, we, I mean, a lot of cases we agree with them, but uh, <laughs> we always respect them. So, you know, I think if you treat people with respect, you're, 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 even your community treating your community with respect. I think a corporation is part of a, com a community and uh, you know our customers the people we we that live in our neighborhoods and so forth so i think our company i think truly values the the, the whole concept of respect and um it, it's it's a character issue that you respect everybody you do business with everybody uh you know you you work with your neighbors and so forth your community now i know uh 2014 was uh was a particularly good year financially for amica the, the last yep. uh, calendar year i think one of the best you've had in your history right Yep, I think it was something like third best year. We in hope our you won't get politifacted to yeah. double check which okay. one it is. <laughs> um, and one of the things I found interesting when you reported this year in a meeting is that your combined ratio, which yeah. um, for people at home, that's the losses and expenses divided yeah. by your premium. Um, it was below 100%, which meant you, you didn't pay out and spend more than you took in from premium holders, yeah, right. which you want to see. Um, it was over 100% for a while before that. What's driven that shift back to sort of in the black in a, in a way of thinking about it and the way, place you want to be with that? Yeah. Well, if, if you look historically at our company, we, we are operating, you know, somewhere a little below, somewhere a little above 100 percent. And basically what the, the combined ratio means, it's, it's, a, it's a measure of every dollar you take in, how much do you pay out in claims and expenses. If, for instance, the, the combined ratio is 98, that means that 
you've taken a dollar of revenue, paid out 98 cents in claims. Well, 014 was, and, and uh, 013, uh, the, the weather, the, the, the difference sometimes between whether we're at 98 or 103 can simply be the weather, okay? And the weather was a little bit mild in, in, in 014 and 013, uh, and it benefited us. However, you know, uh, again, I, I mentioned earlier, the, the Mother Nature never lets us forget that she's tr truly in charge of our business. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so the first quarter, the ice dam claims and so forth, um, you know, that, that impacted us, and we will likely not be below 100. We'll be actually be probably above 100 for this year. You can and already tell at this point in the year that. Yeah, I mean, I mean we could go down. It, the, the, the rest of the year would have to be unusually quiet from a weather point of view for us to go below 100. So we'll see, but uh, you know, we're expecting we're probably going to be a little bit over 100 this year. As an insurance executive, what, what keeps you up at night? What worries really, really get you when you let your mind go there? Well, um, <laughs> well, what keeps me up besides spicy food? I like yeah. spicy food. That keeps me up some nights. My <laughs> wife tells me don't eat it, and I do, and that keeps me up. But in any event, a, a, a couple of things. Um, as in any business these days, one of the things uh, I you know, uh, uh, got out of college almost 36 years ago, so in my career, one of the things I've noticed, and it's particularly in the last five to ten years, the velocity of change in, I mean, in, in the, 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 the business environment, the economic environment, technology is so fast. When, uh, you know, I started my career, you could sort of see change coming, whether it was a change in technology. You had time to adopt it, to prepare, to adjust to it. Now, technology is just coming at you so quickly, and the disruptive forces for your business or any particular business, not only are there more of them than I've ever seen, but boy, they're coming at you from every angle, and they're coming at you at top speed. So, you know, are we sure that we've adopted all of the technologies that are appropriate to our business? Have we adopted them fast enough and so forth? So that's probably one of the things that keeps me up at night. Uh, I think, you know, um, we're suited to, to you know, prepare and, and be ready for those changes. But there's a, uh, Darwin uh, said, it is not the strong that survive, it is the most adaptable. And boy, that runs through my mind a lot. That's interesting. That's, yeah. I thought you'd say just a big hurricane, but that was much more profound. All right, yeah. we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Amica Chairman and CEO Bob DiMuccio. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and we are talking this week with Robert DiMuccio. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Amica Insurance up there in uh, Lincoln. Though they, as he was talking about, we have, they have branches all over the place. You're also a Rhode Islander, Providence College graduate. Yep. So you're pretty pleased about Friars hockey as we talk this week. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I stayed up la later than I normally do to watch it. It was it was, it was absolutely awesome game, and so I'm very proud of my Friars. Absolutely. I'm always curious when we have a, a, an executive from a big company on here. Uh, did you always expect it? Did you as a kid were you like, I want to be an insurance CEO? That is my goal. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, you know, I, I, um, I, I, I was sort of always good in math, and uh, and I didn't quite know what I wanted to do in high school. And um, so one one of my high school counselors said, you know, why don't you accounting? Why don't you uh, take accounting? So I took accounting at Providence College. And uh, I, I liked it. I, I got a job at uh, a national accounting firm called KPMG in Rhode Island. So I was sort of fortunate uh, to graduate and get a job in Rhode Island and be able to stay here. And I became a CPA and uh, practiced uh, through 1991. I practiced for 12 years out of um, college. And Amica was one of my clients. And it was, I, I can say it now, I guess, one of my favorite clients. <laughs> and uh, so I, I enjoyed working on the account. I liked the people uh, at the company. And in 1991, they had a position open. And uh, at the time, uh, they, the, the, the chief financial officer of the company, a treasurer, a man named Harold Hitchin, uh, asked if I would consider to come to work for the company. Uh, so I, I hadn't been thinking about leaving. I, I liked my job. I liked my practice. I had a lot of great clients. And uh, so I went home. My wife and I talked about it. We took a few weeks to think about it. And I made the decision to go to work for Amica in 1991. I haven't looked back. I, I thought I was going to you know, finish my career uh, in the finance operations, the accounting operations of Amica. And in 
2003, uh, I got a chance to move over to the operations side. So it's 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 been a now you great have to worry ride. about ice dams. <laughs> now I have to worry about ice dams. <laughs> um, you've been uh, actively involved in a lot of the sort of civic business, uh, uh, giving advice to government world uh, since since you became CEO, including RIPEC. And one thing you've talked about frequently is, is Rhode Island's tax structure and the impact on the business mm. climate that has. There have been a lot of changes in recent yeah. years there. Income tax, corporate tax, estate tax. I'm curious, has that brightened your outlook from where it was in the, the mid-2000s on, on how Rhode Island's positioned? Do you think there's still a lot of work to be done? Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm very optimistic right now about Rhode Island in the future. You know, I'm a Rhode Island native. My wife's a Rhode Island native. So, you know, we, we, we really want to be here and we've chosen to be here. Okay. I think over the last two or three years, the legislature has done a fair amount of, of what I think is really good tax reform and corporate, personal, and estate tax. Uh, and I think now, you know, uh, the new governor is putting together this, this package of economic tools, which I think are going to be a great thing for the economy. Uh, and so this package of the tax reform the legislature has passed over the last two or three years and the economic tool package the governor is proposing in her new budget to be used by the Secretary of Commerce and the Executive Branch, I think uh, is going to move the state forward. Now, it took us a long time to get where we are. It's not going to happen overnight. So I think we has to have to have perseverance and we have to have patience. But it will change. There's a lot of great things about a Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Um, you know, one of the things that I see all the time, uh, I have a lot of folks in from different parts of the country uh, in for meetings and things. Uh, actually, I hosted a meeting of other insurance CEOs a few years ago in Rhode Island. And, you know, they get here and they, they just, we, one night we took them all to Newport. And they, 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 they just can't believe that they hadn't been here before. And a number of them said, you know, well, I'm going to come here on vacation. So it's a great place. I think sometimes we're down on ourselves. I have a sense of optimism. I think the things we've done to date are great. The legislature, uh, the tax reform that they did is great. I think the governor's uh, got to work out the details, obviously, in the legislative process. But the governor's tools package is particularly important to move us forward because it is not one thing that will move the economy forward. It's uh, doing a number of things right. And the tools package, I think, is going to be important. So you do think she's on the right track generally in her approach? There's enough consultants happening it's it's the kind of things that could move the needle yep yep and, and you know I, I think she's added a sense of optimism to the state uh, that that's that's absolutely incredible I think she's been out there she's been visible she's been answering questions and you know I think she's been sort of telling it like it is I, I you know I, the, the, the fact that uh, you know it's going to take some time I've heard her say a number of times I didn't sort of invent that and 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 I but I, I, I truly believe that if we persevere um, the state's economy is going to begin to improve, and we're going to see it noticeably. All right, we're going to end on that positive note. Uh, it's all the time we have this yeah. week. I want to thank Robert DiMuccio for joining us this week, Chairman, President, CEO of Amica Mutual Insurance, where you do not need a referral anymore, as he made clear. So no, we you want can to talk to everybody. Sign up right now. Give them a call if you want uh, some new insurance. Thank you again, Bob, for coming. And thank you for joining us this week and every week on Executive Suite. If you missed any episode of the show, you can always catch those on WPRI.com. And don't forget, you can now catch us on the radio as well on WPRO and WEAN at 6 p.m. on Sundays. See you next week on Executive Suite.